ReaperCon 2016 in review. Oh, hi. <laughs> hey, everyone. I am getting back into the videos, or at least trying. And I will start off this season, I guess you can call it a season, with the ReaperCon 2016 year in review. Show a quick little bag so I don't have to go grab it anymore. Yeah. That's the swag bag that it came, all came in. i start out with the, the drive. I didn't fly this time. I drove with my wife 12 hours to uh, the Dallas area. It's not a bad drive. It's, it's 80 miles an hour pretty much the entire way. I-35 is a pit. I've never seen any place that had a little sign that said road, road construction 22 miles this way eight miles that way. So there's a 30 mile stretch of constant construction and it's just amazing. I joked that it was a really good Jeep trail because it was pitted and I can't wait for it to get finished and I'm sure the residents can't either. One amusing thing is I was using the navigation system and we were crossing over Lake Dallas and in the middle of it the navigation suddenly says now turn left. That was really odd and a little worrisome, but oh well, can't get anything about that. The event was held at the Premier Event Center in Louisville this time rather than the Hilton Garden Inn. I've heard stories, I didn't get anything official, that you know they needed a bigger venue, they weren't satisfied with how the facilities were in the Hilton, they were a little small, classrooms had to be scattered among hotel rooms which I enjoyed I thought that was a really cool concept but maybe people complain about that I don't know they seem to have been stuck with this premier event center I mean that the carpets weren't put down in time so we were you know, however hundred many people and cement floor and it's just a basic big retail area so it was a little loud um, especially the one classroom at the end near the gaming area the classrooms were really just draped off areas so there really wasn't a lot of sound canceling in between classes someone joked that you know every class they took was one and a half classes because they could hear the instructor behind them talking get some information from there which was funny um, because it was bigger it did feel a little emptier and I felt the attendance was down but apparently 520 entries which was more than they'd ever had before at least I'd heard that announcement and but maybe it's just because the bigger venue it didn't have the density of people. Uh, you, know, you didn't have to walk through the gaming area every time to go to a classroom like we did at the Hilton Garden Inn in 2015. So that's maybe part of it. Uh, you know, that whole section was just disappeared from view. We mostly walked up and down the back aisle near the painting gallery to the in between Reaper Reaper's booth. So that could just be it. You know, they did say number entries were up, but that doesn't mean attendees. Uh, the food, let's see, it was Pizza Hut the first night. I have to look at my badges, I got them in order. Anyway, Mexican, Italian, and then a, a chef's catered thing. I, the chef's catered thing probably was my least favorite. It's, it's just uh, I'm not a fan of creamy foods and they had like a creamed chicken dish and so. personal preference lots of people said the food was really good uh, lunches they did not have the pre-made lunches this time so it was you know basically fine lunch yourself they did have a lunch truck come up and it looked like it was quesadillas hamburgers that sort of thing so that was there a lot of people said they had fun with that my wife and I we went <laughs> to different places, uh, a lot of places that have closed or we just moved away from. Uh, 
specifically thinking of Super Salad and In and Out. We lived in California for 10 years, so In and Out was a big thing to. So we enjoyed going out for the lunches. The class schedules were spread apart more, so we had more time for lunch. Plus, we didn't have as tight a class schedule as we did, or as I did the last time. So that's pretty good. But um, I'm going to start in with the swag. You already saw the swag bag. We got uh, from Bobe's Hobby House. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Uh, some string. It's you know, stretchy string. And there's a little thing here. It's talking that it's supposed to be for telephone poles, and cabling up on the airplanes. It can be used for bows for figures. So definitely I'm going to try that out. So I'll just pile things beside me. Uh, Badger Airbrush was there. A lot of people were really happy with that. that. This didn't come in the swag bag. I grabbed this while shopping. They had a little paint list, and that's what I snagged. So that's not swag. That is, well, it's kind of swag. Castles and Crusades. Little chart under the Blood Moon. Get it up high so people can see that the free RPG day. And I haven't even opened this and looked at it. Not a gamer. I will look at it eventually. The big thing was the... Well, not the big thing. There's the ReaperCon program guide that we kept and we have all our classes circled so I'll keep that handy in case I forget the names. One funny thing they added to the swag bag, bag is the don't get bit by the con crud. Uh, there's a sponsor. Zombie. Uh, I thought someone sponsored that. Anyway it was vitamin C bags and uh, a little couple portable bacterial not wipes, the hand cleaner. Uh, Fat Dragon Games gave away a download code for a free copy of their 28mm scale Ravenfell Sewers terrain set, so I've hidden my code there so you can't use it. Ha 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 ha. Uh, the Longfos Vitalis, um, probably Vitella photography, little poster cards, Dark Sword miniature card, another Dark Sword miniature card. Maybe I got two. We did get the VIP package which included which included the VIP stuff. So some of the stuff is VIP, some of it's not swag. I've got it all mixed up, so don't buy a swag bag just based on what you see. For some reason I kept the little VIP box. I don't think there's anything special about it, but I'll throw it away here. The little envelope for Reaper Bucks and the tickets that came in it. I don't remember what happened to my Reaper Bucks. So tossing them around at the end, I think they went for the coffee mug. Got a little Reaper notebook, and I have a Reaper pen, but I don't know where it went. This big thing said ReaperCon 2016. And pretty standard, just plain notebook. Uh, I did not use this. I figured it would be a cheap souvenir for the kids. I hadn't given it to them yet. I'm keeping it, I think. That is not swag. Ah, uh, see here. So I'm just going to go quickly through. Uh, Valiant Miniatures. Uh, it's got a code, actually, so let me hide that. And it's uh, a little figure like that. Let's say what it is. Doesn't say what it is. So it's a figure. I uh, see 2016 ReaperCon Sophie. Oh, come on, I know you can focus on that. Are you even focusing on anything? The camera hates me. Come on. Focus on that. But you can't focus on that. But when I held it up really close, you were able to focus on the other one. There we go. So there's Sophie's face and her things to sit on. Tombstone. Wings. 
and Bob Rodolfi sculpted. This is the Ungorth Sathon Summoner. I'll get it really close to the very beginning so maybe it'll focus quicker. There it is. Got some bones and it's resin it looks like, not metal. And I heard talk that Reaper's going to get into more resin casting. Yeah. I didn't talk to anybody. That was a thing I'd heard half. I have no idea where I was going with that. Anyway, ReaperCon 2016 swag, Mouse Mummy from Dark Sword Miniatures. Got it. Good. One cool little. It's not a mouseling, but it is a mouse figure. Uh, me. Melusine Dark Ember, another resin. Kind of going slow so you can pause the video if you want to look at it more. And ReaperCon 2016 Mouseling by Gene Van Horn. I'm going to hold this at kind of a strange angle because. He's in the box. Okay. I'm recording on the computer behind me, but running it from a tablet, and there was a little bit of lag. Ah, uh, see. <clears throat> I they had four factions this year, and apparently they've always had four factions, but they hadn't brought it up to everybody and so they made it more prominent this year. I went with Bonehenge just because the others were vampires and undead and that, not what I was into so I'll settle for these. Uh, my wife actually piss, picked Dusk Wardens so she got a different figure and she is now into minis so she will not let me have it. Is that too close? That's too close. Will you focus? Doesn't like to. There we go. So, there's an interesting little figure. I liked it. It's, uh, Bobby Jackson. Sculpted that. Reaper included a big box of base samples. And I already opened mine. Because I decided. I took my speed paint lizard man that I had and decided well I'll enter him anyway based him decided that wasn't good enough bought a bunch of hands which I was gonna bring downstairs I've got a little bit of melt table stuff but it's it's just hands and some figures we threw in to bulk everything up to get to the one ounce with hands don't weigh very much melt table looked less than it was last year but maybe that should be because people got hit by baggage fees last time you know fifty hundred dollars for bringing too much stuff there and back anyway uh, let's see continue with the swag they had uh, some free base samples and this is the multicolor stuff from the base boss Kickstarter they've got they also had free samples of these just sitting around you know take take a bag if you wanted I didn't take any bags so so I got just the one they had a uh, water cup to give so you keep calm use more purple keep calm and paint miniatures keep calm and rinse out often so I don't use my con cups for water so I have another cup I can use for something else let's see Star Trooper, sculpted by Bobby Jackson. Little tiny soldier there. It came with a base, so we'll do something with that. Eventually, before I die. Uh, Bombshell Babes was giving out miniatures, and I don't know which one this one is. I don't know if there were multiple versions given out. Just a uh, little figure there. 
So she'll go into my growing stack of bombshell babes. This one, I don't know. I have no idea where it came from. I don't think it was in the swag bag. Honestly, I think someone slipped it into my bag. That, or I somehow managed to walk off with it somehow. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. I'm very confused. More swag. Uh, let's see, I'll probably just go pretty quick. This is getting long. Uh, Frontline Games. Little base. I think they were different ones. I think my wife got cobblestone. I got steel plate. Works for me. Tabletop Plus. Got a little column there. Then uh, Portsmouth Miniatures and Games. We're giving out these little things, and it's a little pirate ship kit. My wife got the England pirate, England ship. It's just little paper sails you can cut out and put together. It's interesting. Table full of awesome. We're just giving out little samples of their terrain. That's just a wooden crate. It's focusing on me, not the there we go. Uh, there are some paint samples. This is a Styler Nice Stein, Steinel Re, Res primer. Uh, water based acuric polyurethane. I got kind of like a green, so a little green bottle of primer. I believe Badger was giving these out, but I'm not certain. I won't drop the paint on the floor. So two two boxes of paints from Reaper. First one's got ghostly moss, um, something crimson, something shadow. Now one of these is the swag bag paints. The other one is the um, VIP paints. I don't remember which one is which, so I cannot tell you. Well, I probably could tell you. I'm thinking that one was the VIP paints. Because this one has pumpkin orange and I think it's ghost uh, spectral white. I think it's white. I'm not for sure. And then a yellow that I can't see because I haven't opened them yet. So I, I, the pumpkin orange is looking up here. I think I have like four bottles of it now. I'll probably have to paint something orange. I'm trying to think of anything I could paint orange. Anyway, uh, they had the little card where you go around and get punches and we had one no-show but you know they skipped that. And if you did that you get Bobby Jackson's Halloween night. Oh look, something I can paint kind of orange. I don't think it'll be enough orange, but there we go. We've got that. Ah, uh, swag. Oh, there we go. Reaper Bones Glue. Supposedly specially formulated to use on their Bones figures. I have not used it, obviously. It's not out of the package. Lots of people kind of worried about flying home with this, which you know, is flammable stuff. Probably not meant for... Not package for exports outside the USA. Huh, didn't read that. Anyway, uh, they were all excited about that. A couple people said they used it and were happy with it. Obviously, I hadn't used it yet. And I was going to say something about that. What was I going to say? Anyway, I, that's what it was. You know, one of the good things about me driving, I didn't worry about what I was taking nor what I was bringing back. So I think that's all the swag I had. I have all my notes. Shopping. Uh, I backed the Red Panda Critterkins Kickstarter. And so I was able to pick up three of my little figures. That's Kira. Let's see if it'll focus through the plastic. It likes me instead.
Okay. Any Kira, John. Oh, you focus on that one. And uh, ah, I don't remember his name. It's the wolf. So I got three of my Kickstarter rewards before it all ships out. And that was a little thing he was doing at ReaperCon. I uh, stopped by Scale 75 and I picked up uh, Dr. Morciardi, the little walrus guy, and bought the wife, two little squid things. She's really into painting animals and cute things, not zombies and monsters. It just needs to focus on that, doesn't it? It's not that shiny, you can pick up on it. I wish I had a manual focus button on this. Anyway, so picked up those two. It was kind of odd. They were on a booth away from all the other vendors, so it felt a little bad for them. But they were right next to the classroom, so they got a lot of exposure, at least to that side of the room. I also picked up some paints. There's the non-metallic metal scale 75 paints, and I'm trying to get the shine off but it doesn't look like it's going to do that. I'd have to block it out completely. Maybe if I tilt it like, there we go. So just quick little set there. Lots of people have been talking about how good these are so I figured I'd try a bottle or two and then decided well why bother I'm not going to get this in focus so I don't care. Look at the pretty colors and go ooh and off. You want to know what's exactly in there? Go to their website. I also bought the German vehicle camo. I figured that would be good for all the calves that I have left to paint. So I could try a couple on them. All the colors there. Which is not in focus, of course. Then we went to, oh, that was swag. Let me find it. The uh, Happy Seppuku Spider Webbing base stamp. So I got that, and you know, I had never seen one. I hadn't backed the car Kickstarters. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll try a couple. So, you know, got that. I hadn't tried it yet. Walked by their booth two or three times. And finally decided to go and, well, we'll buy a couple. So I wound up buying uh, the planks, wooden planks, the thatched roof, although I guess it could be a tatami mat as well, the regular bricks, And they were out of the field stone, cobblestone, so I picked up the larger size rather than the regular size. I, they probably should have mentioned that at the very beginning because I was ready to walk away with nothing. And then later on we walked back and I decided I needed one more thing, so we bought the uh, alien terrain infested type stuff. They were putting you know, a regular planked one down. I didn't buy the spaceship flooring, but they do that, then put another little, let that harden, put another little piece, squish that in there. So it looked kind of cool. I figure I have things I can do on that. My wife bought a lot of things, but that's her video she can watch. She doesn't have YouTube. You can't watch it. She probably wouldn't do it anyway. Um, let me before I go to classes, we did do a speed paint. Uh, she took her first class, a beginner class. The instructor was hard to hear. The instructor soft spoken to begin with. It was noisy. So she was a little disappointed about learning the beginner class. She did take a second beginner class later and was happier with that. So she's okay with things. But anyway, we took a, well, not speed painting, a paint and take. 
You're not gonna fo you're focusing on me. Don't focus on me. Don't focus on the back wall. Can you focus on that right there? Of course not. <sighs> I guess I can put it up on my forehead. And it... Yeah, perfect focus there. Yeah. Hope I don't have anything crawling around my hair. Anyway, we painted these little little guys at the paint and take, and she was excited about the dry brushing because that was just amazing to her. You know, advanced painting people don't dry brush that much, but you know, just the fact that she was able to get some color complexity, like one of my teachers told, very quickly and very easily was made her very happy. So if you're a beginner, try that all over the place if you want. Classes. Uh, I took a vehicle class on how to paint vehicles, mostly because of my little mobile howitzer I've been working on. I'll discuss this one more in a bit. It only... no, no. Anyway, learned how to do certain things on that. So that was a good class. He used the airbrush for a lot of it. Showed two different techniques for getting shading really quickly and fast on a little cav airplane, but he was more... Fo I think he worked more on the larger models. I should probably just pull up my guide here so I can actually tell you people's names because his this wasn't the first class. Yeah, Greg's Greg Zuniga, a painting vehicles in Mecca. The Reapercon guides on Reapers forum somewhere, so you probably can search for it and find it. Uh, but the one I took before was Rhonda Bender's Level Up Intermediate to Advanced Classes. I took a lot of notes on that. That was a lecture, not a hands-on. The painting vehicles, that wasn't that was a lecture as well, not a hands-on thing. But both very good classes that picked up a lot on. Uh, the next day was Michelle Blastenbray. I probably butchered her name. Uh, dirt and scenes done dirt cheap. And I thought it was a little bit more, going to be a little bit more on dirt and scenes, but it pulled up a lot of stuff, a couple of things I'm going to try. You know, hands-on activity was the, forehead, was the uh, making trees out of jumper cables. And she had to actually go borrow someone's jam jumper cables to cut up because she left all this stuff at her hotel room. A um, lot of good tips on that, on how to make dirt more interesting on your bases, um, little techniques you could use for cheap terrain, uh, flock and how to flock a, a big tree really quickly. So interesting class. And then uh, Ian Markin, Curl Clean Brush on the Reperforms, his exotic non-metallic metals. And here's the little shield I forehead. Here's the little shield we painted, and we're doing all those blends on the non-metallic metal. You know, I, I don't think I did a terrible job there. I was really proud of my little line down the middle, which was a tip from last year's painting vehicles class. Was use little tiny short strokes, and when you screw up a big one, it won't look that bad overall. But what is important to me about this is it kind of clicked on how to do blending. Blending has been a big problem for about six years for me and you know, I, I don't like talking to people so I don't check and I thought I knew and suddenly you know he's talking about it. Oh just wiggle the brush in between and it's like oh erase my lines, lines between layers. Oh I can do that. So I was pretty happy with my blends on one side not so much on the other but for a first time where it suddenly clicked into my head, that was good for me. And I think... So then we went, I went to uh, Rex Grange's The Monster Under the Bed. I painted for head. This little monster. And where's his hand? Here's his hand. Now, hold on. Oh, okay, good. 
I'm gonna sit thinking, I painted his hand. Why has it got this big white stripe? I see the same big white stripe on the back. And why is this not showing up? It's the uh, bandages that I didn't paint. But anyway, there's that color transition between the palm. I have to put it on my head. Between the palm and the rest of the body, then uh, all the little blends inside the the arm itself. Then we worked on. Not gonna focus on that, are you? Ah, I feel like an idiot holding this on my head, but that's the only way to get it done. So you know, we painted this up in in true metallics. And, you know, just went over a little bit of highlighting and rusting on large models for that. So it was a fun class. Then, the last class was, uh, you made that from what with Bob Rudolphy? And I snagged this little thing from, he was just going to throw away all the things he'd made for the other classes to show, and that's a Christmas ornament on top of a thumbtack on top of two corks on top of a bigger cork. So I thought I'd have fun and paint that up and submit it next year as a contest entry just for grins. So on to the painting competition. I entered three models, really only two purposely entered. I entered a, my speed painted 12 hour death sleep dragon work in progress is up on the reaper forms that was 12 hours with a single brush and a single sesh painting session so I, I didn't expect it to win anything other than certificate of merit but the other one I entered in the same category did better so I got two bronzes my painters entry was this little bunny bushido forehead let me get it centered come on there we go and you know, I was pretty proud of this of course until I took it to the contest uh, afterwards it was kind of and eh, it wasn't nearly as great as I thought let me try something here All right, put that in front of it to focus No, you won't focus at all. Okay, anyway, it's a uh, little bunny from Bushido, not Bushido, Eureka Miniatures. I got it into Japan because I thought it was a custom job that the store had done, but no, it's pretty available. It was in actually in a set that they broke apart and was selling. So here's the bronze medal for it, one of them. And they're not going to focus on this either. I did notice they went with the uh, little petri dishes for the ribbons this year instead of the little clamshell cases, but more entries, more cost. Then I entered my mobile howitzer. This is a 3D printed model. There's 30 individual pieces that I printed out and glued together. I had one and I got the paint to crackle and it's probably because of the primer I used over plastic so I decided to start over and improve it a little bit and then I kinda of messed up his leg here he's actually supposed to be standing flat so I just built up some cork which actually probably helped the overall presentation but I've got some big flat spaces up on top here that really could have used some insignia, some flags, some unit numbers. And this came one vote away from getting a silver. So if I had actually, you know, if I had applied the stuff I learned in the first class after I'd already entered, so it's kind of hard to there, but by putting what I learned in, I probably could put a solid silver in this one. So that was a good thing for me. Painting competition itself was a lot of very good entries, as always. It always makes me want to just snap my brushes in two. But the little blending click in my head will maybe 
make things less stressful for me now because I can kind of see how that gets done. Um, my favorite, I forget her last name, I was going to look it up, was Knowles uh, Edge of the World, Edge of the World Dragon, or Here Be Dragons, I think it was called, I can't remember. But it was a custom made little dragon off of lots of bits and pieces of bones that was hanging off the side of the the plinth and had water falling off and a compass point on top and a little tiny pirate ship. And I did vote for that for best of show. I you know, probably wasn't going to get it, but she did get my vote for best of show. Um, like I said, go watch the, the galleries. I'll try to put a link down in the description to their 2016 entries because there's a lot of them. You can peruse them on Reaper's website pretty easy. So wrapping up here, one thing I did was Foramite Bingo. And this is two cards I pulled because I didn't have enough um, ribbons because I messed one up. So I needed to ensure there weren't more cards than ribbons, even though I probably could have got away with that. Got lots of thank yous for doing that. It forced people to actually meet other people. And a lot of, well, I wouldn't say a lot of, mostly it was foramites. A couple people that were hunting out ribbons really jumped in on that too. So it was good to do that. And I'll have to think about what to do for next year. My wife and I have thought of a couple things to do that we could do, like adventure paths or dot-to-dot -dot games and deciphering games, things like that. So we'll see what happens next time. Little worried I can't go back next time because we'll be in the middle of some very intensive overtime situation maybe if it's in October yet next year. They haven't announced any times yet so I don't know when it's going to be or if I can attend. But hope to attend. Wife hopes to attend and kids don't get to go again because they're not 16 and I don't want to sit in their classes. <laughs> anyway, that's my wrap up 2016 ReaperCon. Hope to see you on the forums. Hope to see you on my channel soon. I hope to be painting here really quickly. See you around. <coughs>